Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day so far. Hope you got to be able to uh, wake up and do what you love and do what you're passionate about. If you are, you're very blessed and keep up, uh, keep up the hard work and dedication. And if you're not doing what you're very passionate about, you need to sit down and develop a plan to get there as quickly as possible. Um, life is too short to waste it doing something that you're not absolutely passionate about and that's not helping the world become a better place. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is John Manley, self-made, self-taught in the sales industry. I've been doing this over 10 years. I built myself up from being a telemarketer of uh, cable television uh, up to an uh, executive vice president, managing uh, 20 sales professionals nationwide and about $20 million in annual revenue. Uh, by the way, a little shout out to my man Grant Cardone today, wearing a little bit of uh, of his swag out there. Got my young hustler shirt on or hat on, and my uh, who got my money shirt. So uh, a little shout out to Grant. Um, if you don't know who he is, definitely check him out. The guy's a a wealth of information and experience. Um, so the point of today's call is uh, yesterday we discussed. Uh, the importance of cold calling is cold calling dead in today's modern era with the internet and marketing and, and social media uh, and, and emphatically my opinion is absolutely not. I have built my career uh, of uh, being told no a hundred thousand times because that means I got one thousand yeses and like I said if anybody who doesn't mind uh, a thousand yeses is very easy when you don't mind being told a no a hundred thousand times to match it. Uh, success is absolutely guaranteed when you reach enough people via cold calling. Uh, so today's point of today's video is to discuss the anatomy of a sales call. What do I want to discuss? How do I engage my target audience? What is the best way to navigate through that call, provide as much value as efficiently as possible? And how do I give them very uh, specific uh, expectations and, and kind of a action points to move this uh, conversation forward with them and get my product in their hands as quickly as possible? So when you're doing a cold call, how am I going to differentiate myself from the 10,000 other calls they're getting? First thing I want to do is always show a great level of respect and understanding for the person that you're contacting. So if I'm calling somebody over the phone and they answer, I'm not just going to jump into a very fast, quick pitch and talk about how amazing I am, how amazing my product is, uh, without even asking one if they have time to speak with me. I know there's differing opinions in the sales industry. You should never ask the person a yes, no question. You should never give them an easy ability to get out of a sales call. I completely disagree with that. You need to show the level of respect. You have to understand this person does not expect you to be calling right now. I, I, I know when I answer the phone and it's a salesperson doing a cold call and they rattle off three minutes worth of things before I've even had time to digest who they are and what they're calling and I'm trying to do a thousand things at once already, I'm not going to buy their product. No matter what they say, I'm annoyed that they're just rattling off and telling me like they're reading from a script for me. They don't care what I have to say. They don't care what's important to me. And they're just trying to pitch me and just trying to sell me. Nobody likes to be sold. Remember that. So I'll always start off the call by giving a quick five-second introduction. Who are you? Why are you calling? Very, very short, very quick, very sweet. Ask them if they have time for a very short, efficient uh, conversation to discuss uh, why you know your solution, your service, your product is going to make their life easier, how you differentiate from your competitors and the other people calling them, and how you're going to overall just uh, improve their day by, by having them take three minutes to talk with you or five minutes to talk with you. Now that we've gotten their permission to speak and, and to, to go over a quick conversation, now you want to give a little bit of a longer introduction. Who you are, who your company is, what sets you apart, what sets your product apart. Now remember, one of the traps I see a lot of sales people fall into is that they confuse description with value. The difference between description and value is I can describe anything. Um, you know, I could pick up this juice, right, a, a, a naked juice. I could pick up this juice and say, oh, okay, well, you know, it has uh, uh, vegetables in it, it has no sugar added in it, um, and it's, uh, you know, 100% smooth, fruit juicy uh, thing. That's just description. Why does that matter? Why, why, why does the person, why do I care about any of that? What's important to, to establish value is we have to understand what's important to our target audience. We have to find out what's important to the person we're talking to. Remember, no sale is made until you find a problem and you present a solution to that problem. So if I was trying to pitch this smoothie, this juice, and I was going to say, I, I'd want to identify my target audience. At first, I want to say, why are you looking at juices right now? What are you currently drinking? How do you like it? Um, is, being, uh, is being organic important to you? Uh, is having a quick juice 
that provides 10 grams of fiber, um, you know, it, uh, very important to you. Generally, what's your opinion when it comes to natural juices versus organic juices? What's your experience? What have you done now? That way I can really identify what's important to them, why are they even here looking in the first place, and I can give a very, very tailored response to each one of the main points that they bring up. That way they don't feel like they're being pitched anymore. They're not being feeling like they're being sold to. They feel like they're having a very specific personal conversation that answers very, very specifically why is this product going to make them better, healthier, happier, more productive, or whatever your specific solution does. So remember, do not confuse description with value. They are two starkly different things. I can describe all day who my company is, who I am, but unless I validate, here's my experience, here's how I have helped very specific people in your exact role with my exact solution, and here's the steps that I did to make your life easier when dealing with a vendor, when buying a service, a product, a software, a hardware, whatever my solution tailors to, how does it have the validation and what exactly does it do to make your life an easier thing? That's why people do it. You solve a problem with a solution, People come to you, people will love you, people will give you referral, people will pass along your information, but we need to make it personal and we need to make sure that we're giving them value right from the start after we get their permission. Now that you've established their value, now I'd like to be very blunt and ask the question, now that we have discussed specifically my history, what sets me apart, what sets my solution apart, the exact steps I take to make your life easier when, and how my product is going to make your life better and address specifically how it fixes the, the issue and pain point that you're having today. What are the exact next steps you would like to see in order to continue this conversation moving forward? Maybe I can get you a demo, a trial, maybe we can get a test ride. Uh, maybe I can come on site and do a, a, a face-to-face meeting, do a presentation with the board. We want to make sure we don't just try to rush through the phone call and say, oh, okay, now that they agree with me, now I'm gonna get their contact information, I'm gonna send them an email, I'm gonna send them 10,000 PDFs of look through. Keep in mind, you have them on the phone. They're still talking to you, which means they, they find value in what you're saying. They're waiting for you to continue moving forward. People like to be uh, guided on what to do. People say they don't like to be told what to do. I fairly disagree. People like to know what's coming. They like to expect uh, or know what to expect um, when a salesperson talks to them. What they don't appreciate is just being kind of left, here, I'm gonna speak for five minutes and then I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna send you contact information. I don't have time most likely, even if I liked you on the phone, if you send me some email afterward, I might not have time to read it. Especially if you send me PDFs and brochures, I got a lot of things going on, somebody might come into my office. Uh, most likely, you probably just lost any progress that you ever made. Remember, like 90% of contacts that we talk to one time won't ever remember who we are when, until we talk to them again and continue building that relationship. So it's very crucial and very critical that we set up uh, once we've established the value uh, and they understand the pain point that we address, now we need to really establish what is our next action point, what is the next step that we're going to do, and what is the time frame that we're going to utilize in order to do it. Now you both have very clear expectations of what is going to come next. Now after the call, when you do send them an email, you do send them additional information, you give them a very clear breakdown of what you discussed in the conversation, what pain points uh, they either mention specifically that they have or that your solution addresses, what the next action step that you both agreed to take is going to be and what the time frame for that will be, and perhaps, or preferably, have an, a, a meeting invite specifically set up so that it's kind of locked down in stone so that a week from now or 10 days from now uh, or the next day, you guys can specifically um, address that and keep that uh, process moving forward. Uh, it's also very great to get their cell phone at the same time. That way, an hour later, you can send them a text Say, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Later that day, you call them back. Say, I wanted to make sure, once again, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for allowing me to address the pain points uh, and, and describe how my solution is going to fix those for you. I look forward to speaking with you in X number of days or hours, etc. Now that we've established um, all of these different steps and we've established a, a perfect time frame to contact them back, now uh, and we've uh, re-verified, validated everything in an email to them, 
Now when we call them back in a few weeks or a few days, whatever it is for their schedule, or we come on site for a presentation, now we have all of that documented. So if they don't specifically remember the conversation because they were very busy, they get a lot of sales calls, now we can give them a copy of the overview that we discuss with them. So everything comes to the back of back to the front of their mind. And they also know you're very studious with taking all their notes. And now you can give a very, very specific follow up presentation based on that initial call because now you know their logic. Now you know their personality. You know what's important to them. You know how you can best ask, uh, utilize your solution, your service, your skills, and your experience to address and resolve any pain point that they're having and ultimately get your solution into their hands as quickly as possible. Remember, nobody has helped, no sale is made, uh, or, or no solution is provided to a customer until that sale is ultimately made. You're doing them a disservice. Um, if you fail to convince them that your solution is the best uh, fit for their needs. So I definitely appreciate uh, you, you listening to this video and tuning in. I hope uh, you found it very helpful. Remember to take uh, notes as you watch these videos. Really break down the anatomy of a cold call. Don't just go in blind. Oh, and I'll make another video about this to discuss. But when you follow up in two weeks or a month or whatever it is, when you talk to somebody... Never ever say, I'm t here to touch base. I want to see what's on your desk. I want to see what's back ordered. I just wanted to connect up with you. I wanted to touch base with you. I hate that. What a pet peeve of that is, of, of me, that, of mine that is. You know, salespeople think they have, they have it in their mind that they're supposed to follow up, but they don't really have the expertise or the skill or understanding to know how to follow up. So they say stupid things that provide no value, like I'm here to touch base uh, you know, and, and connect up with you somebody telling me they're, they're touching base with me is telling me I don't have anything better to say. I have no value to provide for you right now. So I'm going to use some kind of filler sentence um, because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Anyway, that's not the point of this video though because that, that's not going to be done on a cold call. I will make another video specifically addressing how to follow up, when to follow up, what specifically to cover, um, and, and bet how to best move forward from a follow-up conversation uh, and continue progressing that uh, that relationship forward. So again, my name is John Manley. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you share the video uh, and like it and get every out to any uh, salespeople that you want to help increase their skill level and kind of light a fire up under them. Have a fantastic day. Do what you love. Do what you're passionate about. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. Bye.